everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my top three favorite whiskeys of 2022. So these are all 2022 releases that I got my hands on, tried, and fell in love with. On the tabletop tonight, I am sipping on my number one. It's really good. Hmm. So let's just go right into it. We'll kick things off with my number three pick of 2022. It is Bardstown. This is the Discovery Series number eight. Now, one of the things I love about Bardstown is their labeling is seriously top-notch. It's next to none. I don't know anybody that does labeling as well as Bardstown. So their bottling is really cool. It looks nice, looks clean. But the thing that I love about it, and I'll, I'll be sure to have some B-roll footage of this to show it to you up close. But on the label, they tell you everything that's in here. They tell you all four of the whiskeys, the mash bill on every one of those whiskeys, how old each one of those whiskeys is, where it came from, everything you could possibly want to know, they put on the label so you know exactly what you're getting every time. You know, a lot of times you'll see a bottle on the shelf in a whiskey store and you'll want to know more about it. You'll be like, I want to know the mash bill. I want to know how old it is. Maybe you have preferences. Maybe you're looking for a high rye something. Maybe you're looking for a low rye. So I always love when they put all that stuff on the label for you so you don't have to pull out your phone and start researching stuff before you pick up a bottle of something. But the Discovery Series number eight, it comes in at 114.1 proof. 66% of the whiskey that's in this bottle is from Kentucky. It's aged 12 years. It's a high corn mash, so it's 78% corn, 10% rye, 12% malted barley, which is a high uh, barley percentage there. And then 17% of it is a seven-year-old Indiana whiskey that is a rye whiskey. So it's 51% rye, the minimum requirement for it to be called a rye, 45% corn, 4% malted barley. Then you've got 11% of what's in here is a 12-year from Canada that is 100% corn, all corn. And then 6% is a six-year uh, rye, 95% rye, 5% malted barley. So everything you want to know, all, every whiskey that's in here is labeled clearly for you. And so they're picking these for this blend to make a whiskey that has a very unique flavor profile. And I think they nailed it with uh, this bar. It's, it's not what's in my glass. I was about to sip on it and give you tasting notes, but that's not what's in here. But this whiskey is delicious. Uh, you definitely get some of that rye that comes through. The rye that's in here is a seven-year rye. You know, it's been mellowed. It's been matured. The youngest thing in here is six years old, and that's a full 95% rye mash bill rye. So you get some of that, not like the, the punch that you get with the young ryes. Like if you're looking for that spice and the mint, you know, a lot of times you get that up front with these uh, young rise, but as rye mellows out over the years and gets some age on it, then you start to get these like yellow fruit notes. You know, you get the apricot um, and even a little bit of melon in there, and it's just lovely. And that just kind of supplements, it lifts up and it elevates the other flavors that you get with the wonderful bourbon that's in here too. That 66%, you know, most of what's in here is that bourbon, uh, that very old, by the way, bourbon, a 12 year old bourbon from Kentucky. So it, that's that's the thing I really loved about this was having those older, mellowed out rye flavors there as a supporting cast to elevate a bourbon. That's something I don't see a lot, and that's why this one really stood out to me and just tasted phenomenal. Bardstown Discovery Series 8. That is my number three. Oh, I should mention MSRP for this. Um, you're probably looking at, what, like around 140 bucks, something like that off the top of my head, for Bardstown Discovery Series 8. So that's kind of around the price point you're going to find at about 140. Next up on the list is something that doesn't cost as much, but I think kind of edged it, it kind of edged it out for me, which surprised me because I don't tend to be a huge Elijah Craig fan. But the Barrel Proof Elijah Craig Batch C9 2022, this blew me away. I had the other batches as well, and they were more or less what I come to expect from Elijah Craig. I, like I said, I don't tend to be a huge Elijah Craig fan. I, it tends to have sort of a, a musty kind of aftertaste to me with Elijah Craig, personal preference, that I don't care for. But the C922, it seems to, it doesn't get rid of that. It actually kind of makes that mustiness a little bit more, I don't know, palatable for some reason. Almost like it's, it's elevated, it's found a way to take that flavor and actually make it enjoyable to my palate so it's not that same sort of dry tannic dustiness that i get on uh you know the standard small batch of elijah craig or something like that you know i grew up in the middle of indiana in farm country and uh one of my best friends at the time they they raised corn uh, on their farm 
And so this reminds me of when, you know, harvest season would come around and there would just be whole, cur- just vats of whole corn, whole kernel, dusty corn and the smell you would get off of that. That's what this reminded me of. And it obviously ties in a lot of those quintessential bourbon flavors, those caramels, those butterscotches and vanillas. And it was just absolutely delightful. So that's why this one stood out to me, C922. It was the way that the dusty corn kind of came and elevated itself to interact and mingle with those quintessential bourbon flavors that made this one just absolutely stand out to me. And I loved it, loved it, loved it. So my second place, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch C922. It is a uh, 128 or 124.8 proof, and it is fantastic. And I should also mention it has a 12-year-old age statement on it. Uh, also, uh, this, I think I paid around 100 for this, about 100 bucks. So cheaper than Bardstown but edged it out a little bit for me personally. Both fantastic. And my number one 2022 release, Calumet 16, okay? So this is the second year that they've done the Calumet 16 and uh, they've updated the labeling. And I gotta say the bottling on this is just, it's fantastic. So the, the label is that black and gold, absolutely beautiful. The, uh, the whiskey in here has this absolute, it's just so beautiful, the color on it, that deep, rich, reddish brown. Almost makes you think of like maraschino cherries, you know, in their juices. Just a beautiful, beautiful coppery bronze color on that. And that is what I'm sipping on tonight, too. So the Calumet 16, interesting, they uh, don't disclose where they get these barrels from, but they have bought whiskey they say uh that has been distilled and aged in bardstown so that most people just assume that it is from bardstown uh the the actual distillate but it comes from a fairly limited batch it's a 19 barrels so it's not a big batch size you know 100 barrels or whatever it's 106 proof it comes with a nice little history backstory you know sort of in honor of a horse that won 16 races in a row and this is 16-year-old whiskey. Most people assume this is a low rye mash bill as well. But the thing that really made it stand out to me are the aromatics and the way that they deliver on the palate. So on the nose with Calumet 16, one of the things that I get very strong right up front is banana bread. And I love me some banana bread. So the fact that it delivers that banana bread no- note on the nose just front and center immediately I was like, oh, hello, you know, mm, tell me more, you know. And then underneath that, obviously, you've got your uh, your bourbon, you know, quintessentials, like your your caramels and uh, mature oak, not that dry tannic oak, but that mature roasty oak. But it's just banana, so much banana on this. And a little bit of like tobacco leaf as well, a little bit of that like tobacco leaf kind of a vibe too. And leather, like, like, a, like a well-worn in, uh, baseball glove. I know it's a weird thing to say, but I love it. And then all of those things, especially the banana, come through very strong on the palate. Oh, lordy. The leather and the tobacco come through a little bit more strong on the palate than they do on the nose, but they don't overpower anything at all. That banana bread is still there. Those rich caramels as well. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal whiskey. And this is like Bardstown. It's going to set you back around 140 bucks. So there you have it, my top three for 2022. I will admit there are some uh, releases that I didn't get around to being able to try. Like there was some Parker's uh, Parker's Heritage collection, that stuff that I didn't didn't get to to try, get my hands on this year. And I know that a lot of people raved about some of that. Uh, Lucky Seven as well. So hopefully in 2023, I'll be able to try, uh, you know, a lot more of the the limited release stuff for the year and even have a bigger, better selection to draw from uh at the end of the year for another updated video of my top maybe like my top 10 2023 releases when we get there but anyways let me know what 2022 releases stood out to you what did you try what did you love um and then on the flip side maybe there's some stuff some limited release stuff from 2022 that you just did not vibe with feel free to let me know in the comment section Thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. I love you and appreciate you very, very much. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like on it. Subscribe for more whiskey content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Mm-hmm.